Hi again. Um, I was just getting ready for bed myself and I thought I'd try to make a quick reading video. Um, I'm not sure how long it will go on for, but I'll probably tire myself out with this because the first part of this book and actually most of it will sound quite boring, but I think that doing kind of boring readings is the best way to make yourself tired and want to go to sleep. Um, I, I always feel kind of guilty if I just like, read in a day because I feel like I could be doing something maybe more productive but um, I'm usually not that productive anyway. But, um, yeah, this is something that would actually be really useful for me. It's a sign work book. And I've already read um, the beginning and some specific parts throughout. But I decided to try to just kind of get through it. Um, but yeah, it's quite, it can be quite boring. So I guess this is a good time for you to just sit down or lay down and just kind of switch your mind off and listen to me droning on about something that you're probably not very interested in. <laughs> so this is an old sign writing kind of manual by Bill Stewart um, and I was downloading some sign writing and lettering kind of manuals or guides earlier on from archive.org it's like a website where you can find um, films and books and software and things that are kind of basically free to download and use in certain ways. I think it's generally because they've kind of become so old that I don't know, the copyright just kind of changes or something. For example, this book is from 1984. Um, this one I couldn't I find on archive.org but I was downloading a lot of books earlier and some of them went back to the mid to late 1800s. So obviously that was the only way that people could make signs back then. So this is a second edition. And I've just skipped the intro because there's not much point to that. So, chapter 1, Letters. Development of the alphabet. Our alphabet took many thousands of years to develop. This development was concentrated in the Mediterranean area, with the Romans putting the finishing touches to it and spreading it throughout Europe. In 2000 years, we have not changed the shape of the 23 letters which the Romans originally used although we have added a further three characters to enable us to express our language a little better. During the 2000 years of its existence, and particularly in the past 100 years, the alphabet characters have been used in a variety of different styles. The signwriter and the calligrapher have played their part in the stylizing of the letters, allowing the brush and the pen to vary the shapes without destroying their identity. The printer also influenced the changing styles by introducing a more staid and mechanical aspect to the letters. With the great boom in advertising during the 20th century and the rapidly growing commercial need to identify a product or a company in an immediately recognisable graphic form, the variations of the 26 characters of our alphabet have become limitless. The modern sign maker can be asked to produce a sign in any one of hundreds of different styles of published alphabets. Faced with this colossal range, 
not a scene out of days because um, so many more kind of styles that people can use. Faced with this colossal range of alphabet styles, the trainee sign maker has great difficulty in knowing where to start studying letter shapes in order to be able to set them out for reproduction by sign writing, printing or cutting. One solution is to return to the source. To study the original letter forms used by the Romans and develop an appreciation of why letters have taken a certain shape and how the shape of one letter can be related to the shape of another. Legibility and good looks. Most people reading a sign see it in two ways. One as an easily understood text. Two as a pleasant, good looking arrangement of acceptable letter shapes. The first is functional, the second aesthetic. All signs should satisfy these two needs if they are to achieve their purpose, for example, to be read. Letters can be shaped in many ways, yet retain their identity. But although certain shapes are immediately recognisable by a majority of people, there are certain shapes which most people will prefer. If letter shapes do not please the eye of the reader, they may be rejected, and the sign has not achieved its objective. Figure 1.1 1 .1 shows the letter P in many styles, which are readily identified by the majority of people. If those people were asked to select the one which they prefer, the largest number of votes would be cast for the second letter. The reason for that, for this, is that the curved shape is most clearly based on a circle, and the top shape takes up an apparent half of the upright. This aesthetic feeling can be taken one step further. Figure 1.2 shows six consecutive letters of the alphabet drawn in three different ways. All the letters are easily recognisable, but the third line is the one preferred by, mo by ma majority of people. The first is a hodgepodge of styles selected from six different alphabets. The second one, all the letters are drawn to exactly the same width. In the third, all the letters are related to the circle or occupy an area similar to the circle. These illustrate that letters not only have an accepted basic shape, but need to be related by a similar bond to other letters in the same alphabet. Studies of the many Roman inscriptions which are still available throughout Europe have shown that the circle was a vital element in the construction of the letters and provided the link between all the letters. The student of lettering will find it invaluable to be able to draw letters in their original or classic form. The knowledgeable and appreciation absorbed the knowledge and appreciation absorbed during this exercise will be applied to the reproduction of all other styles of lettering and make that sign maker a more versatile and discriminating craftsman. Methods of drawing classic letter shapes There have been many published methods by which letters can be drawn in their correct classic proportions. The three most common ones have used as their bases the point, the square and the circle. Point system. This was devised by Ernest Sanderson in the 1920s. The point refers to the thickness of the stroke of the letter, or the thickest stroke if they do vary. Every letter then is given a point weighting, and this multiplied by the point 
determines how wide the letter will be. For example, the classic Roman A is 9 points and the P 5 and a half. Therefore, if the thick stroke is 10 millimetres, the A will be 90 millimetres wide and the P 55. The width does not include the serifs, which project a further one point. See figure 1.3. The system has been adapted to cover both Roman and block capital and lowercase alphabets. It can prove difficult to use because every letter must be learnt as a number and exercises in its use become more a mathematical problem than a drawing project. Square system Many published books on lettering have shown the classic alphabet constructed in squares or parts of squares. The zero is a full square, the H four fifths of a square, the E half a square, and so on. Some books show each letter drawn in a squared grid of 100 squares. The method is restricting because no letter is a square therefore this artificial basic shape is not related to the letters. Also its use invariably reduces setting out to a mathematical problem. See figure 4 1.4 OHV system. This method uses the circle as its basis, therefore is immediately related to the basic shape which many people require in a letter. It requires no remembering of numbers to determine letter widths, being based more on drawing shapes than arithmetic. It can prove easier to apply to setting out letters for students than the previously described methods. Because it requires the setter out to make judgments and comparisons, it has a more lasting effect in training the eye to register good shapes. The system is based on the premise that all curved letters are circles or parts of circles, and that the H takes up the same area as a circle, but is not the same width. Figure 1.5 one shows the letter O as a circle with an upright drawn either side forming a square and diagonals through it. When upright lines are drawn through the points with the diagonals cross the circle as in figure 1.5.2 a rectangle is formed which is approximately equal in area to the circle. This is the proportion of the H. Figure 1.5.3 shows two angled lines from the bottom centre of the circle. Through the same point with a circle and H cross and onto the top line. This represents the proportion of the letter V. It is from this simple device that the proportion of most letters of the alphabet can be found. Apart from the three letters already defined, the letters C and D can be seen. It is the D shape which is also the basis of the B, the P, the R and the S. Each of these four letters contains a shape or shapes which are the proportion of the D. The D. The S is two D shapes. 
the top one backwards and the lower one forwards. Table 1.1 shows the related proportion of each letter to the OHV. Drawing to these instructions produces a skeleton letter shape to which can be added the thickness or thicknesses to produce bot, block, sans serif or Roman capital letters. The thicknesses are sometimes added either side of the skeleton and sometimes inside. The method by which each letter can be constructed to draw the classic block alphabet is described below. The block alphabet is a convenient one for the student to start with because it can be constructed almost entirely with drawing instruments. By drawing each letter in this way, the trainee will learn the true shapes and will be able to identify the particular characteristics and problems peculiar to some of the letters. In the early days of training for sign writing, full-size lettering layouts will be necessary to work from to gain confidence as well as to learn shapes. For screen printing and most glass work, a full-size drawing is usually required at all times and on many occasions it is necessary to draw the letters when some form of enlarging equipment is not available. When these letter shapes and proportions are established in a seeing sense, there will be no need to use the laborious methods described. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and maybe record another. I'll keep a few videos shorter because I've made a lot of long ones from up to an hour lately. But I hope that you're fast asleep. Um, I kind of want to be now. <laughs> so, good night. Thank you.